the beginning of the 13th century, Constantinople, capital of the Byzantine Empire, was the largest and richest city in the Christian world. To the Arabs, it was Constantinia, the impregnable citadel that had defied the armies of the caliphs. The Vikings called it Mikkelgarth, the great walled place, and wondered at its riches. The Turks of Anatolia may have already begun to call it Istanbul. Whatever the name, Constantinople was a spectacular place. At the city's heart was the sprawling Great Palace, overlooking the Hippodrome and its ancient statues. Across the square known as the Augusteion rose the dome of Hagia Sophia. A broad colonnaded avenue connected these monuments with the forums of Constantine and Theodosius, and finally with the gates of the towering Theodosian walls. Near the walls, with the exception of the region around the Blacurni Palace, the preferred imperial residence after the 11th century, large areas were set aside for reservoirs, orchards, and market gardens. Most of the city's 400,000 inhabitants lived closer to the center, where churches and marble-walled mansions loomed over the packed hovels of the poor. The fires that accompanied the Crusader sack of 1204 destroyed about half the city, and the ensuing Latin occupation was almost equally devastating as the cash-strapped Westerners cannibalized the city's treasures. After the restoration of Byzantine rule, and especially after the catastrophic civil wars of the mid-14th century, the emperors lacked the resources to repair more than a handful of the most important buildings. By the eve of the Turkish conquest, much of Constantinople lay in ruins. Travelers compared the outlying districts to a rural landscape scattered with villages. The Great Palace was a shell, the Hippodrome was overgrown, and the Church of the Holy Apostles, mausoleum of the emperors, was collapsing. After the Ottomans took the city in 1453, Constantinople became the capital of a rich and rapidly expanding Islamic empire. Topkapa Palace rose on the summit of the ancient Acropolis, and the city's other hills were soon crowned by vast imperial mosques. The population swelled too, and then beyond its Byzantine peak. With the exception of the larger churches, which usually became mosques, most of the Byzantine city was soon demolished for building material. Over the past century, the continued growth of modern Istanbul has covered much of what remained. But if you know where to look, traces of medieval and ancient Constantinople can still be found. During late antiquity, a series of Byzantine emperors set up honorific columns in the public places of Constantinople. Ultimately inspired by the columns of Trajan and Marcus Aurelius in Rome, these were imposing monuments designed to loom over the surrounding area. Some were granite monoliths imported from Egypt. Others were decorated with spiraling bands of marble reliefs. All were crowned with statues. The remains of one of Byzantine Constantinople's honorific columns can be found in the second courtyard of Topkapi Palace. We have here the impost block, that's the bit of the giant block that went on top of the capital, from the column of Leo I, who reigned around the end of the 5th century. We have a larger part over here, the entire capital. The monument was demolished uh, in the early Ottoman period, probably just for building material. Ended up here, uh, where bits were reused, but a few sections survived, including this wonderful capital, which as you can see, has human faces incorporated into the acanthus leaves. This is the column of the Emperor Marcion. It consists of two joint columns of Egyptian granite, and its capital, adorned as you can see with eagles, once carried a seated statue of the emperor. That statue is long gone. You can still see this wonderful relief of Nike on the base, along with the dedicatory inscription, which reads, this is the monument of the Emperor Marcion, dedicated by the Prefect Tatianus. The most imposing of Constantinople's honorific columns were associated with the imperial forums. Like their predecessors in Rome, these were monumental plazas ringed by colonnades, designed to celebrate the victories and glory of the reigning emperor. 
The Forum of Constantine was a circular plaza ringed by colonnades. It was bounded on one side by the Senate House, and on the other by an amphium. All that vanished long ago, but the honorific column at the center of the plaza, made uniquely and extravagantly of porphyry, still survives. It was crowned originally by a statue of Constantine, wearing a radiant crown. That toppled in the 12th century. You can see that the top drum is a later Byzantine restoration. But the rest still survives, albeit a bit charred, a remarkable testimony to this vanished public place. The Forum of Theodosius, completed in 393, was an expansive monumental square that featured a basilica, an honorific column, and an imposing triumphal arch, whose own columns, rather exotically, were made to look like clubs. You can see those tear-shaped patterns. Those are actually lopped branches, as though it were hewn from a tree. At the top of those lopped branches was a fist. And if you look just below me here, there are the fingers. The column at the center of the form of Theodosius, which stood roughly in the middle of your screen, resembled the column of Trajan at Rome, with lines of spiraling reliefs. Though the column was destroyed around 1500, a few of those reliefs were incorporated into the foundations of the Baths of Bayezid, as you can see here. Most of Byzantine Constantinople's churches were converted into mosques within a century of the Ottoman conquest. In addition, of course, to Hagia Sophia, many of these can still be visited. Highlights include the Monastery of the Pantocrator, the Cora Church, and the Church of Saints Sergius and Bacchus. Between 524 and 527, the immensely wealthy heiress Anikia Juliana, the daughter and granddaughter of emperors, built a church dedicated to Saint Polyuctus. It was widely considered to be the most impressive church in Constantinople. It was a huge structure, about the size of Suleimanie Mosque, and very richly decorated. Justinian's Hagia Sophia was built to rival it. It burned sometime in the Middle Byzantine period and was plundered by the Venetians. As you can see, it's currently under excavation. Only a small part of the Great Palace, the Mosaic Museum near the Blue Mosque, is accessible today, and only facades remain of the Bucolian and Lucernae palaces. The mansions built by the Byzantine elite have also virtually disappeared, with two notable exceptions. This is part of the Palace of Antiochus. Antiochus was a court eunuch in the reign of Theodosius II, that is, in the first part of the 5th century AD. He was immensely wealthy and built this colossal mansion beside the Hippodrome. We're looking at what used to be known as the Palace of Lausus, which has now been established as an antechamber or reception room for the larger Palace of Antiochus. Most of that mansion lay off to our right, behind that tall fence. Its central feature was an enormous triclinium, dining room, that was circular in form and had elaborate apses worked into the walls. After Antiochus' death, this became a church dedicated to St. Euphemia, and served as such, it seems, until the Ottoman conquest. To my right are the substructures of a very substantial Middle Byzantine building but what that building was is unclear. It may have been the Boteniates Palace, but this is just conjecture. It served later as a cistern, and now, unfortunately, is just a place to leave trash. Let's see if we can take a look inside. Although most of the extant remains of ancient and medieval Constantinople belong to imposing monumental structures, there are also scattered remains of the more utilitarian buildings where most Byzantines lived and worked. It seemed fitting to close with Constantinople's oldest and most mysterious monument. This is the Column of the Goths. It received its name from the inscription on its base, which reads, to fortune, giving thanks in return for victory over the Goths. We don't know who set it up. It may have been Constantine, or it may have been Claudius Gothicus in the previous century, when Constantinople was still Byzantium. 
Its capital carried a statue of Tuke, the goddess of good fortune, or possibly, according to a different source, of Byzas the Megarian, the founder of Byzantium. Whoever set it up, and whoever it commemorated, it survives as a tantalizing fragment of Byzantine Constantinople. For more overlooked Byzantine buildings, check out my tour of Byzantine Thessaloniki, which is linked on screen and in the description. My new book, Insane Emperors, Sunken Cities, and Earthquake Machines, is now available as a paperback, ebook, and audiobook. You can buy your copy through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or your local bookstore. For more Told & Stone content, check out my channels, Told & Stone Footnotes, and Scenic Routes to the Past, which are linked in the description. Please consider joining other viewers in supporting Told & Stone on Patreon. Thanks for watching.